Yakali. It's oh, definitely not okay. something I expected to see. I think that's very greedy. Uh, and it this certainly is can Roscoe's win. Yakali, man. He's a lead one in order to trade for it. Yeah, and they also give uh, the Drake over as well as a turret plate. Those early skirmishes. But if he doesn't, yep. you know, you're going to have a big Ooh. problem. Croco has a big problem himself as Heroic Entrance is going to come through, but Effort maybe regrets that decision. BDD, Empress Divide onto two. Croco going to be chased down by the Olaf. Rascal might be delivered the kill, and he is. Shockwave not going to find any joy at all as Fate comes on in, but now Rascal's here as well, gets the second of the perfect execution, and Effort gets taken down, conquered by the... Very, very good. And uh, this is the Gen G that we got used to in their first few games. They've since gotten worse, but now Undertow's flying on forward. Flawless, though, decides that he doesn't want to fight this as teleports coming through from our top lane. Is there's a shockwave onto four members, but Summit is just eviscerated. BDD off to the side, looks for the Empress Divide, but doesn't get it onto Croco. He wants to get there and get that advantage early. He wants to be able to hit a lot of Qs and have that skirmishing power before Rascal gets down there. The reason oh, why this could be a disaster for Live Sandbox. The collapse comes through. Yep, we got the Zenith Blade to come down here as well. Solar Flare is flashed out of there by Fate. Shockwave picks up one of them. BDD makes his way back. Definitely a high value target as Emperor's Divide doesn't do too much. Now Rascal finds himself between a rock and a hard place, but Croco is going to bite the dust first. Taken down by Flawless is now Shirley continuing to get frustrated within this one. <laughs> Rascal quite low. Summit deciding he wants to take matters into his own hands. Not sure whether it's the greatest move as life comes on over and Summit's just going to be smited early, then there is no calling out of this one very likely. It's going to be so difficult because how does Leo really get value in these upcoming team fight rate before 20 minutes with no contest? Now where else are you on the map? BDD is grabbing top turret. Rascal's on the bot lane uncontested. Actually, you see a rotation up from Fate, but what can they really speed? You can ult as often as you like. And uh, when you've got champions like Leona that just want to try and ult whenever they can as oh god this poke damage is just ludicrous out of gen g yeah stealing away that out of turret so easily bdd continuing there with the sand soldiers the emperor's divide too is going to get so much value out of this uh drake i mean they have two amazing ults for engage this rascal oh. just has no fear here he probably no. should yeah, it might have uh, wanted a bit more fear than that. Does, of course, have the ultimate available as uh, old Justice Punch doesn't connect. Summit looking to get over the wall. Remember, this is the perfect game, Rascal. Don't play with our hearts like this. <laughs> as he's going to make it out. Teleport available. And the Drake has been started. They can't lose this either. If you make this a 50-50 and lose the Drake, I'm going to be very upset, Genji. So anti They are looking to fight this. it. Yep, teleport coming through from Rascal. He's seeing whether he can do it, seeing whether they can get this fight. His life flashes on forward. Shuriken backflip doesn't connect. The Drake is taken by Gen G and BDD locks down the gargoyle. And look at Flawless just obliterating the backline. Shockwave does absolutely nothing. Summit trying to be a hero. Life goes down. No! The perfect game is over as Croco is now going to be the next target. Gen G still going to win this game. You got to take what you can get, right, guys? As Flawless should be able to find an undertow. No, it's an Udi, remember? So maybe you'll just... No, Reckless Swing, never mind. Way too no. far. You he's got his Banshee Veil. But no. But he's... Yeah, he's still mega dead. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> that even 5v4, yeah. they just cannot muster a fight. And it ends up being that this pick... As a 6,000.6k gold lead. As BDD puts up the wall. I think that was intentional, actually, just to make sure that it works yep. like a Weaver's Wall. And that guarantees the Baron, so... For any of you throwing Keck Ws in the chat, I would stop as in goes Effort, looks for the taunt, but only finds it onto Flawless, who doesn't get taunted. He's gonna grab the kill onto the Gargoyle first up. That's a one-man shockwave, but immediately Rascal gets back in. Perfect execution gets an afterthought Samira kill. And Croco's now trying to run away life. Can he actually get the stun onto the Udia? That's the question, as there's a Shuriken backflip, and Summit will be the next in line. Life goes golden just to taunt the man in the Live Sandbox top lane. That that's your omen ace, and that should be the game. So it's just trying to play a game of League of Legends. <laughs> oh, no. Well, he uh, he almost got to uh, to have some fun there, but it didn't happen. This is going to be nearly a perfect game from Genji. The Akali pick works a treat. Rascal goes 3-0 and 6. A flawless game for he and flawless. This is at 6-0. <laughs> yeah. And every lane and the jungle and everything is now life going in once again croco just going to wander his way out infernal chains mean absolutely nothing that's a dead summit 
Um, I would be more excited about it, but it feels like there's an air of inevitability right now for Genji as Effort tries to run away. Rascal underneath this inner turret. You've got Udia still running, giving some thumbs up, but it's not a thumbs up towards a victory. It's a thumbs up to get me into game number two. I'm done with this one. BDD going deep. Yeah, there's the Empress Divide. Special delivery on the Orianna. She gets a shockwave, but it's not going to really do too much as Leo. Oh, the last couple of feathers from Ruler. Cool guys don't look at explosions either now as Croco looking for the Zaya, but I don't think he really wants to find it. Maybe settle on the fountain at this point in time and just wait before that game number two rolls around as perfect execution out from Rascal. Wants to be able to take down Croco here. Gets onto the fountain, grabs the kill, goes golden. And that will be the ace for Gen G. Heroic effort. The only death for Rascal was on his terms. This game, flawless as well. Phenomenal performance. And this is the Gen G reinvigorated that we wanted to see. Yeah, reinvigorated it's against it's well, like hover something fun and then Aatrox. There you go. <laughs> and it doesn't actually do that great into the um into the orn. Necessary, yeah. but they do get the flash out of Leo and the exhaust out of effort. Not bad stuff. No, this is gonna make it so much easier for life to actually play forward with no exhaust there. He's not done. Yeah, another one. I don't know whether the passive was back up again. That would have done a decent amount of damage there to Leo, but still, do you know what life's going to do? I'm going to go back to my point, okay? Yeah, go what for you it. What you do is hover your mouse over enemy champion, put down the E button, and then you get first blood. It's so easy. You're getting As dominated this world. Like you can't find anything. I like this. Wait for life to use his E. Sidesteps the grand entrance very nicely, but he's still going to die. Takes a little while, and Ruler's able to offer a lot of damage back. Well, Drake, and to be perfectly honest, they've given away most of them uh, that they've seen. They've from life as well. Will keep himself alive, gets a slight shield from that W. And uh, now the Ornhorn has been sounded. Let's get a couple of knockups here as in goes Flawless. Finds the man drop as Summit's going to flash out of the way of the Searing Charge. Leo, just uh, under fire a little bit underneath this turret as Ruler lands the Void Seeker as well. And now Genji are going to be able to head towards Shelly and try and take her down. Summit lying in wait. Flawless is just going to walk away. This is really hard for Live Sandbox to defend. They used almost all of their early engage tools uh, in that fight. Uh, the previous skirmish, and now they're just trying to reapproach this with BDD. Oh, he oh, misses! No. Yeah, it doesn't get the Emperor's Divide whatsoever. Has to flash get himself out of the way. Great double knockup. There's the Cataclysm. The stopwatch is available for life, but I have a feeling he's going to be falling down regardless. Four members, a little too many for just one Jarvan to deal with, and that is going to be Eye of the Herald over to Croco. And uh, they just say thanks for the leash. And that is, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of that is on BDD. Uh, yeah. He doesn't hit his Emperor's Divide if he hits that. The team fight ends in that moment. It's just clean up, but he misses. And now BDD again in trouble. Yep, the full punishment. Tries to sit, shift some sands to get out of the way as fate. Tanking up that. After they did manage to get to about a 1,000 lead earlier on. And now fate's only going to extend the live sandbox situation by taking down his outer turret in mid. And for a twist of fate to be uh, this far in the lead as far as the lane, that's fantastic work. And now destinies like this can happen. Because he's going to jump forward. Ruler immediately cleanses and fate may have bit off more than he can chew. Immediately afterwards, Ruler gets out with a killer instinct and flawless. Locks down the kill, but Ruler's going the wrong direction. Grand entrance avoided, but I still think he's in a bit more trouble than he wants to be. There's the supercharge. Buys a lot of time, but he's still dead. No, there's no more follow-up damage to, to help save and dive on the fate from Ruler. Even though it's a trade, though, Rascal is still getting value on the bottom yeah. side of the map. It's going to get the entirety of this turret. Sure. As uh, this is looking like a Lip Sandbox streak, second one of the game. Genji yeah. cannot engage here. They're too slow. They're going to look for Summit. Yeah, there's the flash forward. Not going to get knocked up as there's the Onhorn, and it looks like Rascal should be able to grab him. There we go. Can't dash far enough. As the shield is set up, and uh, Flaws is going to help. They decided casting was too easy. You know, they were like, well, we're going to have to do a nerf oh, to play-by-play uh, yeah. -play casters. Down and fate. He's just going to use it to reposition. A teleport comes on forward, and now the Destiny not giving the vision that they wanted. Rascal will see when this Ornhorn is going to sound as immediately Flawless is just evacuated. As, uh, fate does get a gold card in. Defeated, he's able to create some distance, and effort actually comes on back in. After respect, Genji, this ults. is dangerous. After respect, Genji's ults, especially BDD's Emperor's Divide, that can turn this team fight in an instant. Rascal moving forward. Yeah, Ruler steals away a blue buff as well. Nice work, you know. 
everything that you get around the side. Certainly good news. As uh, Croco's taken half of his health bar from the dragon alone, I believe. As here's the Ornhorn, Horn, finally. Life goes in. Nice double knock up there from the Orn as Ruler supercharging. Basically unhindered in the back line. Just does it all pretty much by himself. Locks down Leo, and this is exactly what we were talking about. Flawless makes his way back into the fight, and now they're able to take down this dragon very comfortably. Just enough time bought. Beautifully done by Genji. Yeah, really well played. And this is... You know, to give over. Level 15 for Rascal, so Typhoon should be coming in relatively soon. There we go. As in goes life once again. Leo is the one that's put in the baby cage this time as effort. He's in a lot of trouble as well. Rascal finds the flank. Beautiful aim on the ram as now Summit was like, uh, maybe I'll go in. And then he's like, maybe not. And then back in with the, uh, the World Ender. But he's stunned up, gets a huge shield as Rule is just standing in the front line. And now Olaf thinking that he's tanky is absolutely not. Life gets away from Fate and Rascal does not care about Fate's damage whatsoever. Ruler picks it up. Summit looking for the flank angle as Rascal has another ornament to give over. As, uh, that ceaseless hunger comes through. Fate's gonna have to Destiny for a flank. He's so late. Here he comes. Yeah. Yep, Summit gets over the wall as well. In goes Fate with his Proto Belt. Cataclysm set up on the back side. And now Leo's just going to be taken down. Ruler gets in with the Killer Instinct. Emperor's Divide onto Summit, who tries to get out of the way and does keep himself alive for a little while, but it's a double kill for Ruler. And now he's chasing after Croco as well. Make it a Quadra as he's looking for the Penta onto Fate. Fate will get out of the way, though, and will deny Ruler his rightful Penta. And he'll have to settle for an Infernal Drake. He'll have to settle for a second Infernal Drake as the third one feels like. Right, so like you were saying, he just basically stays in melee range and mows everyone down because no one can stop him. This uh, outer turret will go down. Gen G, probably with Baron on their mind right here. But it's 8, 1, and 3 Typhoon Kaiser, who now has yeah. five items looking for Infinity Edge as the final one, I would assume. As uh, Yes, Kaiser's broken, but Rule is also pretty good. As uh, now, life looking for a possible opportunity. Rascal... Inside the Cataclysm, who's stuck in where with who is the question as Leo up into the Featherstorm, trying to stay alive in the back line. Some low health bars on Gen G, but the Blade Caller not good enough. Effort gonna get a knock up there on BDD, who flashes out, shifts some sands. Good knock up from Rascal as well as Ruler, continuing to free hit on the back line, but now gonna be moved out of the way. Fate threatening with the gold card, and they will be able to lock down three kills and now live Sandbox. Look Another, like they're... he's like, oh, I didn't get the Penta last time, coming for it this time. Look at the damage. Yeah, he has a lot of damage here as Ruler will get stunned up at the QSS. There's the Emperor's Divide you were looking for. Will Killer Instinct right into the backlight flashes over. And this is why he held on to it. They wanted to get it to oh. the... There's so much CC here going into this fight. You know, you do see BDD coming from the, the top of this fight again. But everyone gets super low. Live Sandbox has a... Uh, threatening some inhibitors. It's a big gold lead as well. About 5,000. And I actually said two versus four because I'm like, surely they're not going in two versus five. But it was, in fact, uh, two versus five at that instance. As Summit taking a lot of damage, Searing Charge gets the knock up. As Rascal's pretty big in that back line. And now Flawless Man dropping in to try and get some damage down. But now finds himself kind of lonely. There's the Ornhorn Horn, though. Effort actually going to avoid it for the minute. As Pantheon picks up the kill under the Zyre, and now Leo finds himself in that death chamber once again. Inhibitor will be going down. We'll see whether Genji just try and push for the win right here. It looks like it. Ruler is just playing so well. He's playing out of his mind. He's going to get away here. No problem. And I think they've just got too much damage. Yeah, Ruler just going into his supercharge whenever he needs to. That uh, Nexus turret not going to be long for the world as now Killer Instinct comes in. That's a double kill instantly. Summit going to go down as well, and the Nexus will follow. Gen G, a decisive 2-0 in the end. Live Sandbox made them work for it. Uh, with their Welcome, Ruler and Life. Congratulations on uncuffing your losing streak, and you guys are now back on the second place. We were having good momentum, but we had some losing streak, but I'm glad a little bit that we were able to make it back to the second place, but I'm not entirely satisfied with the um, situation that we are in right now. What about you, Ruler? 
It's a big relief that we won today. I think we have to keep up this hard work. <laughs> Ruler, I guess you guys went through a lot of feedbacks after losing two matches in a row, and Flawless was team starting jungler for the side of Genji once again. What was the focal point during that feedback? They wanted to tidy up our direction of the game, and also we wanted to figure out how we can perform better, better. But I think we still have a long way to go. But if we keep working hard, I think we will be able to step up higher. Life back to game number one. Leona was roaming around the map, and she was making a lot of setups for the teammates. You know, setting up for some of the ambates. Plays. So, once you get the play priority, or you're the one making calls for road plays and rotations, I think individual players also make calls. But I try my best to communicate with my players, making calls where the enemies are at. So, it depends on the given situation. I think the current meta is not the best meta for the support role to get the POG, but you got three POGs already. And a lot of people are saying that you are performing even better than last year. Do you agree? I think I performed better last year. I think my form was better. But I think I'm learning a lot. And I think I have better understanding of the game this year. Ruler, do you agree with him? <laughs> I think our team, I think he is trying, I think he is contributing more to the team compared to last year. That's what I can say. Life, your last pick was J4 with Airy Rune, and you said Kalista with J4 doesn't have any opponent, but this time around you were paired up with Kaisa. Do you think J4 in a vacuum is a good support pick? J4 has a really strong lane. And I think it is a really good champion if unless he gets really hard countered. So, um, based on the um, opponent's um, lane bot duo, I think J4 can still be um, maybe a high tier support champion here in the meta. Ruler, as a bottom lane player, what's your thought on the J4 support? And how would you like to rate Life's performance on J4 today? As an AD carry, it is a bit dicey, you know? Once he flex and drags, I think the opponent can actually punish that. But Life is really good at playing on the limit. So it's a bit risky, dicey, but I think still it's a really strong lane champion. Moving on, Life in the previous interview, you made a lot of shout out over to Ambitions J4. So, did he send him any message after that interview or something? Nothing special. I mean, Ambition, I heard he's gone after 2017, so I've got no contact from him. Ruler, after losing a huge team fight on the mid lane, actually Liv Sandbox was able to rotate to Baron, but Azir and Kai'Sa was able to actually ace the opponent. Were you confident that you guys will be able to deal with the situation even down in number? Well, the opponents were very, very low in health, and most of their significant skills were down in cooldowns. And also, BDD made some fantastic play, even though I made some mistakes in that team fight. Well, because of BDD's outplay, I was able to clean out the kills. Ruler, I heard your Kai'Sa doesn't have a high win rate in solo queue, but your Kai'Sa in the LCK, you know, it's a menace. So what's the difference between those two? 
기본적으로 이제 솔랭은 너무 사고가 많은 것도 있고 so 일단은 제가 지금 There are so many actions where I can put it as an accident and I lose every Kaisa game so yeah it's sitting on a very low win rate I think solo queue is more difficult Yeah indeed solo queue has a lot of moving parts but Ruler you had a very impressive skill skill mastery actually so you are taking Q up to three points, and then you took E for four points, and then maxed Q. Yeah, at some point of the game, I realized I didn't max Q. I was maxing E, so I was like max maxing Q at level 12 because I was so caught up with something else. That was an accident. But still, Ruler was able to pop off on the rift, and your next opponent will be DRX. How are we going to prepare for that match in order to push? Your momentum forward. DRX, I think they have a really nice performance and also they have a huge momentum. So I think we have to work really hard in order to get rid of all the mistakes. And ruler? First off, I think we have to practice really hard, and if we can prepare enough, I think we can win that series. So I think we have to prepare really, really hard. This will be the end of the interview from Life and Ruler on the side of Chen Team, and I'm gonna.